Beefcake number 10. Number 10. Beefcake? What the hell is beefcake? Why are we calling it beefcake? What the hell are you calling that thing beefcake, man? That don't make no sense. At the risk of sounding cheesy. Just in case what I'm about to say makes me look stupid, I'm going to preface it with this statement of, at the risk of sounding cheesy. Man, I don't want to sound like a girl or nothing. I don't want to sound like a care. I don't want you to think that I give a shit. I'm scared to say what I really want to say. Isn't that, isn't that it, though? That's exactly what it is. We We're, talked about it on the last, I think the last episode we talked about it. Maybe it was beefcake number eight. I can't remember. Yeah. I don't remember either. But I think that it's an insecurity thing. I do it. I'm oh, as yeah. guilty. I'm as guilty as anybody in the world at at doing this and not being gracious and mm-hmm. not allowing the, the other person to receive the compliment. If I'm about to say something nice to someone, I will preface it as, man, not to sound cheesy or anything, but, and then I say the nice thing. By the time I get that out, I think that that has detracted from the compliment. Yeah, I think you're right. Some people have a problem paying other people compliments. It's not like it's a a thing that's easy for people to do. People uh, will sometimes think that it's obvious that you just did a good thing. And he doesn't need me to tell him, tell him that. So it's like, at the risk of sounding cheesy, that was a really good deadlift. Yeah, and, and assuming that someone doesn't need external motivation, I think is a bad idea. I think that everybody needs right. yeah. external motivation. I need a lot of external motivation. Mm-hmm. I'm full of self-doubt. And even if I'm confident that I, I did something well, I still need people to tell me that I did something well. Yeah, it's very nice to hear that. It's very, very nice to hear people telling you that you've done something meaningful. I think a lot of it is a, a fear of sounding weak or not sounding mm-hmm. tough, not sounding manly. Yeah. That's something that I've, most of my life, I've tried to be pretty tough guy, pretty manly, but it hasn't really resulted in anything because I'm really not a tough guy. I'm not super manly. I mean, I'm not not manly. I'm just kind of, I'm just a guy, mm-hmm. you know, and, and coming to that conclusion has made life a lot easier and not trying to worry about being something that I'm not, or even being something that doesn't really exist. Coming to what conclusion? That I don't have to be manly. Oh, okay. Yeah. That my definition of manly is, is so uh, misguided. Do you think that's because you're getting, you're just getting older? I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it has, more to do with being older, being sober, you know, being in a different position in life with Mm -hmm. being a husband and having kids and trying to be a better brother and a better son. And, you know, I have more areas that I'm conscious. So with, with consciousness kind of comes, I guess, a desire to be, I I don't know, I I guess more feeling. I have more feeling in my life and and with feeling, I'm not trying to, to be manly to block out that feeling. Mm Mm-hmm. I think I haven't really, I haven't really looked into it that way. I think that's interesting. Mm -hmm. It is interesting. It's very interesting. Is paying compliments hard for you to do? Yes. Very hard. Like harder than, harder than you would think. Were you raised being nurtured verbally? Like, did you have, did your parents tell you they loved you? Yeah. Do you tell your kids you love them? Yes. You know, a lot of people don't. I think there's a lot of people that don't do that. Uh Uh-huh. I was raised, my, my mom and dad say it all the time, still do. Uh And so I'm really comfortable with that, but it took me a while to get comfortable doing that. Uh And a lot of that came within the last five years as well with, with recovery and sobriety. I found that I would get text messages and whatnot from, you know, other men uh, that, that kind of knew what I was going through and they would tell me they're thinking about me or that they hope that I had a good day or they'd tell me that they love me. And that was such a a really good feeling, and I needed that in so many ways. But when I tried to reciprocate that, or when I tried to do that to other people, I would feel really, really uncomfortable. Yeah, I can totally get that. And so it was, it was a learned thing. Being complimentary for me was a learned, uh, was a learned yeah. practice. Yeah, I think for me, it's just it's it's being selfish. Maybe that's not the right word. I need to just pay attention. Like what I've been trying to do lately is learn to be present and pay attention so that I'm aware when somebody needs to be paid a compliment or somebody needs to be, needs to hear something positive. 
Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes like, sense. So before, like, like before, I would just not pay attention. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it would just be, things would be going on around me, and I just wouldn't be in, involved in that situation or whatever. I, th- I think, am I making any sense? Yeah, I'm following you. And so now what I'm trying to do is, like, pay attention to what my son is saying. Pay attention to what the person at the gym is saying and really listen and, and soak up what they have to say so that I'm more aware of what's going on around me and I can catch when somebody needs to hear something from me. I think that being aware and, and being present are, they're a lot of the same thing, but that's important. And with being present kind of opens me up to different emotional cues. I found that my Mm -hmm. son, Grayson, my 10 year old, whenever I start getting short, when my temperature, when my temper starts to, when my patience goes down Uh and he senses me being agitated, then he'll immediately go to, how was your day, daddy? Uh How'd you sleep, daddy? Right. You know, and Uh with my awareness comes with that brings the awareness that People are picking up on my lack of patience. People are picking up on my anger. And that uh-huh. makes me want to work on that and be better. Right. Patience. You said it. That's, that's, I think that's what I was looking for. I feel like I'm very impatient. You think you're an impatient guy? You strike me as being very patient. I am, as you know, I am absolutely not patient at all. I guess it depends on the situation. Maybe easily frustrated. I don't know. You don't strike me as being easily frustrated either. I am easily frustrated. Yeah, I don't know. So what do you think about like the whole conception of, of manliness? <laughs> do you strive to be manly? Is there a point in your life that you strive to be manly more than another point in your life? <laughs> um, I don't ever really think about it, to be honest with you. Do you not? I mean, uh-uh. That's been like my entire focal point my whole life. Yeah. I mean, I, I like reading like the like that blog, The Art of How to Be Manly or something like that. I mean, I like that kind of stuff. It's cool. I like reading that stuff, but I don't ever think about like, is is this thing that I'm about to do is that is that manly? Or Everything what? that I do revolves around or has revolved around being manly, which is such a shame. Like I, I don't I don't have a beard. I I have a beard. Of course <laughs> I have a beard. Of course I've driven dually trucks. Of course I've driven one ton trucks, and I work on stuff when it breaks down. Of course I like having grease under my fingernails. When I walk into a room, I immediately survey the room for anybody who's ass I can whip or can whip my ass. <laughs> Do you really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you know, and I look for like chairs in case something goes down. Like how do I, what am I going to use to break <laughs> over this person? Or <laughs> It's a really strange thing. And I just kind of thought that sort of everybody felt. I that don't, way. I don't really, you know, I mean, I have a friend that's like, when you walk in a place, you're supposed to be aware of the exits in the building and those kinds of things, just so you're alert and you're paying attention to what's going on around you, but situational like, awareness. Yeah. But I don't think like, I don't think of it in a way like who am I better than in this room? Like who, who's, who's asking I'll whip. <laughs> yeah. It's not who am I better than it's who, who's asking I whip and who can whip my ass. And I want to be, I want to be aware of that situation. Should it arise? I mostly just say, what do I want on my pizza? <laughs> But that's kind of manly in itself. What kind of beer do I want to drink? Well, I guess you could say I'm thinking, I hope I don't get my ass whipped and I can get to the store and get some pizza. Right. So I'm kind of, I'm multitasking (laughs) to some extent. But you do paint your toenails. I do paint my toenails. I'm a completely different person. I don't look at things like that anymore. Right. I don't ever plan. I'll never throw another punch. And I I don't ever, I, I can't imagine that situation coming up unless it was, Really, really provoked. Uh huh. You know, I'm I'm a totally, totally peaceful guy today. All right. And I try to make that part of my identity, which is part of my problem. I make everything based around identity, instead of just being, I'm um, like creating. Instead of a human being, I'm a human creating myself to be something that I'm not. I'm just a human being. Yeah. Back to like compliments. Can you see how incredibly selfish it is to detract from the compliment? Uh, by saying something like, I don't mean to be cheesy, I'll make that compliment about me. If I say, I don't mean to be cheesy, that's essentially me making the compliment about me when it has nothing to do with me. Yeah. Again, I, I never really thought about it, but it does detract away from your compliment. 
Yeah, it does. I know, and, and I, I know it's you, you know I know it's not a big deal, but way to go, man. <laughs> yeah, well, well, that's that's definitely taken away from it. <laughs> it's really not a big deal. The thing that you did, uh, most people can do it, but I feel like I want to pay you a compliment. So you're great. I feel like I have to tell you this. <laughs> do you think that you can practice the affection that goes into a compliment? You certainly can. Yes. I, believe, I think that you can. You you can always get better at communicating with people i think it's important yeah it's, it's very important and it will it will go a long way for you and it gets easier it gets easier and easier affection totally. is something that can be so uncomfortable but it is also something that can that can really enhance uh your relationship and it can you know it it's nice sometimes the best i can i can do is is pay someone a compliment you know on, yeah. on, on my worst day sometimes I can just say something nice to someone and that makes a difference. Yeah. And speaking of saying something nice to someone, your deadlift program is super, super awesome. Why, thank you, sir. You put in a lot of work to that, man. I appreciate that. And everyone's enjoying it. Boy, we're getting a lot. That's getting a lot of response. It is. I think that uh, we're going to see a lot of people make big gains with that. Lifthevyrunlong.com slash deadlift. Lifthevyrunlong.com slash deadlift. How easy is that? And you can buy a three-month program that's a PDF file with some videos and some tutorials. That's all right. Or you can buy the whole package that includes coaching and Skype phone calls and unlimited email. And you can talk to me. Pretty cool. And I'll pay you compliments. And you can always talk to me for nothing. <laughs> I'm not going to get you anywhere as far as any sort of gains go, physical gains, but I'll talk to you. So I, I, I love talking. And there's another thing. What, I have a it? couple new obsessions. What is it? One is Reddit. 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 Man, I've I've been a Reddit addict for nine years. I just I just started snorting it like last week, <laughs> and hey, I need hey, to I've figure a, it out. There's a learning curve to it. Yeah. And because you've been Reddit it for so long mm-hmm. that we were able to create a lift heavy run long Reddit. That's right. Subreddit. Reddit slash r slash Lift heavy, run long. Or if you're slash lift there. heavy, run long. So we need some subscribers. We need some action. We need some comments. We need people to say, uh, to get involved. We need people to post links there. We need people to post links there. My next obsession, Twitter. Okay. I'm really liking Twitter. Okay. I really don't know how to use it at all. I've kind of gotten, I've gotten away from Twitter. I'm so I, bad at it. I yeah. don't get it. I don't know how to. I don't know. I want to become good at Twitter, but I just don't get it. Yeah. Well, you, all you got to do is use it. You'll figure it out. Okay. I'm going to figure it out. Hashtag beefcake. And if you want to make beefcake happy and warm and fuzzy, subscribe to the email. Subscribe to my email list, and I'll send you the emails and the blog posts and the, the beefcakes. It just makes me so happy when my email dings and tells me I have a new subscriber. So please keep <laughs> doing that, and please keep communicating with me. Right on. All right. We're going to wrap up beefcake number 10. Sweet.